So here are four people I want to focus on in today's video. One being Roy Moore, also known as Judge Roy Moore. One of them is Pastor Scott Lively, Pastor Bill Ledbetter, and American Family Association, Brian Fisher. Now, first thing I want to get into is uh, Pastor says gay marriage causes mass shootings in sermon delivered on Oklahoma Senate floor. Now, we'll just go ahead and read through it. It says, the deaths of 17 students in this horrific shooting at Majory's Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida has reignited a national conversation about gun control. But one Oklahoma preacher has another solution to America's gun violence epidemic. Stop letting gays marry. On Thursday, Fairview Baptist Church Pastor Bill Ledbetter delivered a sermon on the floor of the Oklahoma Senate in which he claimed immorality in our laws causes mass shootings. First thing I want to say is what in the world is a pastor doing delivering a sermon before any, but on, the, on the Senate floor, what are they doing delivering sermons in our government buildings? Okay. First of all, uh, are you going to include the uh, Muslims? Are you going to allow them to deliver a sermon in our Capitol buildings? Are we going to allow the Satanists? <laughs> because now, this, what's interesting, this, what's in the news now is Satanists are suing to get uh, equal representation in our governments now. So this is what we get when we allow <clears throat> any religion in our pub in the public square let's see there's a time in which he chastens an individual he says in a wide-ranging 16-minute address on everything from the tyranny of political correctness to Kim Davis there's a time in which just as he blesses nations he also chastens nations. There are times in which God has to get a nation's attention. The God who judged Sodom and Gomorrah is the God we're dealing with today. He has not changed. Interesting. Switching gears to the February 14th tragedy, Ledbetter says, what is going on? Now, that's a good question. I'm asking the question, Pastor continues, do we really believe that we can create immorality in our laws? Do we really believe that we can redefine marriage from the Word of God to something in our own mind and there not to be a response? Do we really believe we can tell God to get lost from our schools and our halls of legislation and there be no response? Do we really believe that? Well, now this is interesting, Pastor, um, because God is all-knowing. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent, omniscient. Okay, if God is everywhere at once... That means this shooter had to literally shoot through the body, th through God, to get to those kids. And God did nothing to stop them. But you're saying because he's not allowed in our schools that, oh, my hands are tied, I can't help you. Well, we just recently had, in the last four years, we've had two church shootings. What, I'm sorry, was God not welcome in those churches? God could have stopped those shootings, he didn't. Now that, <clears throat> and he goes on. Ledbetter also cited Hurricane <laughs> Hurricane Harvey and Irma as signs of God's wrath, as well as the California wildfires, which destroyed over a million acres of land. In total, more than 260 people died as a result of those tragedies. Wow, hurricanes are now. God's wrath. I'm jumping. I'm, I'm jumping right now. But when have we not had hurricanes? When have we not had tornadoes? We've had these things from time immemorial. Okay. We, we, we've always had hurricanes. We've always had tornadoes. Why in the world are you going to say that these... And first of all, where are you getting your information from? How do you know this? Did God give you a call? Did he let you know that, yes, this indeed is my punishment? How do you know this? Troy Stevenson, executive direct, 
Director of Freedom, Oklahoma, claims Ledbetter's hate-filled and dangerous comments leave a shameful mark on the People's House. In an email to INTO, he particularly criticized Senator John Breachin, a Republican who invited Ledbetter to the Senate as a guest pastor for the week. <clears throat> and I think he should be... Um, I think he should be criticized as well. If you're going to bring in a Baptist minister, then why not bring in a Muslim cleric? Why not get their opinion on what Hurricane Harvey and Irma are all about? Why not get their opinion as to why we're having these church shootings? Yeah, let's just include them all. To invoke the deaths of scores of American children in an attempt to further an extremist political agenda is disrespectful, disingenuous, and disgusting. And I have to agree. Stevenson said, Senator Beecham owes the families of these victims an apology. He owes the fair-minded people of Oklahoma an apology. And he owes the thousands of LGBTQ people in Oklahoma who had to hear these hate-filled words an apology. Uh, hate-filled, I, I think they're just ignorant, my, in my opinion. But whatever. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that, it, that's ridiculous. How in the world can you say beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is God's, this is God's deter determination that these things happen because you've decided? What, where's your information? And, and, and it just goes on. <laughs> and it, here's another one. Gays blamed for history's biggest natural disaster. Noah's flood. <laughs> Noah's flood. Okay, this caption blew me away. Listen to this. The last straw, quote, the last straw for God before he brought the flood was when he started writing wedding, when they started writing wedding songs to homosexual marriage, says right-wing minister Scott Lively. Now, this is Scott Lively now. Let me read that to you again. The last straw for God before he brought the flood was when he started, when they started writing wedding songs to homosexual marriage. Wow. I, I've read the book. I've read the Bible frontward, backward. I, I've read every book. Uh, there's not a single story in the Bible to suggest that. In fact, the Bible doesn't even say what they were doing. The Bible doesn't say that, uh, it doesn't even name what, they were doing that was so wrong that he killed everybody in a flood. Pastor Scott Lively's History of the World, wedding songs at gay marriage ceremonies caused the great flood that had Noah escaping in the ark. That's the latest theory he floated during a radio interview with the American Family Association reported on Right Wing Watch. But really, it's hard to know what Lively had in mind when he said in a recent interview that the last straw for God before he brought the flood was when they started writing wedding songs to homosexual marriage, unquote. Lively is the focus of a first-of-its-kind federal court case, Sexual Minorities Uganda versus Scott Lively. Now, th this is very interesting. This is a court case that's involving uh, Uganda in which the American evangelical is accused of conspiring to persecute LGBT people in Uganda. Now, I, I definitely want to look into that. I, I wouldn't take that at face value, but that's very interesting. The country's LGBT activists have been fighting the kill the gays bill, for example. That's, that, that's an actual bill that's in legislation in Uganda right now. Kill the gays. Mm. I think that's just a title they tacked on. I, I don't know if that's the actual title of the bill. I, I doubt it, but it could imply the same thing. I'll have to look into it. <clears throat> if I find out about it, I'm definitely going to be announcing it. See if you can discern Lively's logic, what logic, about how gay people caused Noah's flood here. Quote, we need to remember that in the time leading up to the flood, what the rabbis teach about the last straw for God before he brought the flood was when they started writing wedding songs to homosexual marriage, and Jesus said that you'll know the end times because it will be like the days of Noah. Well, there's your problem right there. He's quoting rabbis as his authority as to why the flood came. That sounds like propaganda to me. We don't know, let's just tack a purpose on. Yeah, I mean, I mean that sounds like American newspapers are portraying the Germans as baby-eating psychopathic murderers just to, get, just to stir up a nationalist feeling as to, you know, why we need to fight these people. Th that, that is just, wh wh where do you get this information? 
I, I mean, are you, do you have a direct line to God? Is he telling you this? How in the world can you come to that conclusion? Yeah, the rabbis teach a bunch of other hocus pocus bunkum too. Read, yeah, read their writings. Read the Talmud. I mean, you want to talk about absolute disgusting how to live your life as a Jew? Read the Talmud. Absolute disgusting. And you're gonna get and you're gonna get your uh, information from them. Okay. There's never been a time in the history of the world since before the flood when homosexual marriage has been open and celebrated. And that's another sign that I believe that we're close to the end. W what is your proof for that? Homosexuality has been present from day one. We've had we've always had it. How in the world are you gonna say now? This is the time where it's been the most celebrated. W how do you come to that conclusion? Pick up a history book. Look up the Persian Empire. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Lively went on to speak directly to pastors who were listening uh, to the radio show, warning that they face personal losses for opposing LGBT people while also encouraging them to be steadfast. We're entering into a time in which standing for the truth of God is going to cost you more than just a few people walking out of your congregation and the temptation to compromise with the world, especially on this issue. He said, I think this is the issue of the end times, homosexuality. Really? That's the worst you can come up with is homosexuality? Really? What about, uh, what about um, bombing schools in the Middle East? What about starving, uh, blocking off foreign aid from reaching countries that we're, we're bombing right now and letting these children and people just starve to death? Look at what's happening in Yemen. How about the slave trade in Libya? You know that country we, we liberated from evil Gaddafi? Look at, the, look at what's going on in Libya right now. And you're going to tell me homosexuality? Look at what's going on in Saudi Arabia. We just did a 200 billion plus arms deal with those people. Our great allies. Look about look at what they're doing in that country, and how they're treating people that uh, they they don't uh, agree with. Yet homosexuality is your end all be all. Really now. <sighs> It's present if you do a careful investigation of all the scriptures dealing with this from the beginning and all the way to the end. God is painting a very clear picture that this represents the outer extent of rebellion against him in a society and the last thing that happens before wrath comes. Wow, I can think of a whole bunch of other uh, wrongdoings that have a lot bigger effect on people than homosexuality. I mean, seriously, come on. AFA's biggest radio mouthpiece, Brian Fisher, here we go, added Wednesday that natural disasters are all sent by God, of course. All. He said the words all. Here's the thing to remember about any disaster. It is always a call on the people of a land to repent before God. He said on Wednesday, God knows when a nation needs a corrective influence. Uh, there, you do realize there's a difference between corrective and destructive. Uh, just wondering. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Let, let's listen to him in his own words. Take it away, Brian Fisher. So here's the thing to remember about any disaster. It is always a call on the people of a land to repent before God. That's always the ultimate purpose that God has for allowing these natural calamities and these natural disasters to come into the life of a nation. God knows when a nation needs a corrective influence. You know, there'll be times, I'm not saying this is an exact parallel, so don't misunderstand me, but there'll be times when our kids were young and, and you knew that they were just cruising for a spanking, cruising for a bruising, although we didn't bruise our kids. I'm just using it. Yeah, I doubt that. We didn't bruise our kids. I wonder. Yeah, I'll bet you, I'll bet you they had quite a few bruises growing up. Continue. Because it rhymes. But you just knew that they had an attitude and they hadn't done anything yet that was going to require an actual spanking. They were right on the edge. They were skirting the edge. We were very, very careful in our household 
We didn't spank unless it was a willful violation of a known and understood rule of conduct. And before we'd ever spank when they were when they were small, we'd make sure they could verbalize to us exactly why they were getting spanked so that they would know. Well, God sees a nation in the same way. He sees that a nation can be right on the edge of making decisions that are going to be uh, fatal to that nation. And he says, look, the time has come when I need to spank them. I okay, you, you do realize there's there's a difference between spanking and uh, killing people, right? You, what you just did, um, Mr. Fisher, is you compared apples to hand grenades. Uh, they, they don't. They're not even. They're not even remotely in the same category. How can you say that? Oh well, he's just correcting us when um, people are dying, and most of these people that that are getting. In fact, I'm going to read you a story of one such um, natural disaster that killed a bunch of people. None of them were. None of them were doing anything wrong. How how can you say that um, God is? Why were these people singled out for God's? wrath or God's judgment or God's um, correction, if you will. I mean, that that's unbelievable. If that were true, there are certain places in certain countries that should be hit every single hour, on the hour, every day, every week, every year. It just kind of ama amazes me how um, it's kind of selective punishment, you know, when hurricane season is in full swing or when there's a season for tornadoes okay there has to be certain things in place for a tornado to, to happen i mean i mean this is just absolute ludicrous bunkum unbelievable and people buy this they buy it up they drink it up and it's like use your critical thinking continue I need to get their attention. I need to humble them under my mighty hand. And that is the purpose of a natural disaster. Unbelievable. Well, let's go back to the beginning. I want to make... Here's the thing. Yeah, shut but up. Here's the... Th I want to make sure that he... That we, that we don't misquote him because the article did say all natural disasters. That, that, that is absolute... That makes no sense. We've always had natural disasters. Every continent has been hit at one time or another by a hurricane. Uh, well, I don't know about Antarctica or the North Pole, but come on now. We, <laughs> let's hear it. So here's the thing to remember about any disaster. Any disaster. It is always a call on the people of a land to repent. Okay, thank you. That's pretty clear. You That, that, that pretty much sums it up. Any disaster... Any disaster that happens is God's call to repent. Interesting. And that's it for that article. Now, I want to go to uh, Oklahoma. This is, I think, uh, yeah, this is way back in two, uh, 2013. It was another day of wailing uh, storm sirens thanks. just south no, of no, no, Oklahoma. No, 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 I don't need your help. I'll, I'll, I'll take care. I'll, I'll take it from here. Thanks. Oklahoma tornado. 20 children among at least 51 dead. Horrific damage. This is when a tornado went through uh, one, it totally devastated one town, leveled a schoolhouse where children were inside, killing 20. Um, these are kids that went to school every day. I mean, what was their crime? What was God punishing them for? I mean, come on, use your brains, people. At least... 20 of the 51 people killed by a devastating monster tornado that ripped through more Oklahoma were children, the Oklahoma chief medical examiner said this evening as searchers picked through the rubble of schools, homes, businesses leveled by the storm. Officials said they expect the total number of deaths to rise overnight as first responders continue to look for survivors. The two elementary schools were in the path of the tornado. So two, not just one. But the medical examiner did not specify what school the deceased students attended. Desperate parents stood around what was left of the devastated Plaza Towers Elementary School, many of them sobbing as rescuers worked to help pull out school children and faculty. Quote, I know there's a number of dead children from the school, Oklahoma City Police Spokesman Sergeant Gary Knight said. Authorities said Brian Wood 
sorry, Briarwood Elementary School in Moore received a direct hit from the storm and was also destroyed with its roof and walls blown off. Children were still in school because, because in anticipation of severe weather this afternoon, schools in the Moore area did not release their students at the end of the day, according to Oklahoma emergency management officials. Okay, entire neighborhoods have been wiped out, cars were tossed around like toys, and were found on tops of buildings. Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon said at the news conference tonight that downed power lines and massive traffic jams have made emergency response difficult and cautioned those not involved in search and rescue operations to stay away from disaster areas. Our prayers and thoughts are with Oklahoma families hit hard. Okay, well, now wait a minute. If what Brian Fisher said is true, then these kids were being judged. These kids were being judged by God. I mean, this was this evidently this was God's will, was it not? So why in the world are we praying and thinking of them? Isn't that interesting? Our hearts are just broken for the parents want, wondering about the state of their children. Un unbelievable. Yet yeah, you try telling the parents, uh, Mr. Fisher, you you tell you tell the parents that. The reason their kids are dead is because God did that to them. He's trying to get our attention. You, you tell them that, and good luck. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, a, a, absolutely no help at all. Useless bag of water. Now, let's talk about what causes tornadoes. In case you didn't know, let's do weatherquestions.com. Okay, now, tornadoes form, okay, tornadoes form in unusually violent thunderstorms when there is sufficient, number one, instability, and two, wind shear present in the lower atmosphere. Instability refers to the unusually warm and humid conditions in the lower atmosphere and possibly cooler than usual conditions in the upper atmosphere. Wind shear, in this case, refers to the wind direction changing and the wind speed increasing with height, an example would be a southerly wind at 15 miles an hour on the surface changing to a southwesterly or westerly wind at 50 miles per hour, 5,000 feet altitude. This kind of wind shear and instability, instability usually exists only ahead of a cold front and low pressure system. The intense spinning of the tornado is partly the result of the updrafts and downdrafts in the thunderstorm caused by the unstable air interacting with the wind shear resulting in a tilting of the wind shear to form an up, excuse me, upright tornado vortex, helping the process along cyclonically, flowing air around the cyclone, already slowly spinning in a counterclockwise direction in the northern hemisphere, converges toward the thunderstorm, causing it to spin faster. This is the same process that causes an ice skater to spin faster when she pulls in her arms in towards her body. Now, I'm not going to go in through the whole article, but we know how tornadoes are formed. There is science that actually explains that. We have created little tornadoes in laboratories. You can actually watch them. There's YouTube videos on it where they've actually introduced this scenario into an enclosed container and you can actually see a twister form it's phenomenal it's, it's just wild that we can actually create one in a laboratory in controlled conditions of course now th think about this now let's use our critical thinking it, it, how in the world are we going to say that this is an act of god when it takes i mean <laughs> I, I i'm 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 just I'm just baffled at the, at, the, at, at the duplicity. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if these people honestly believe what they're saying or I, I don't know, or if they're just appealing to their fan base. I, I don't get it. I really don't. Oh, and also, uh, let's go to Judge Roy Moore. <laughs> oh, a broke Roy Moore blames LGBTs, Hillary and Obama for money woes. <laughs> Raising money for a lawsuit he's fighting, the failed Senate candid candidate says the unholy forces of evil are attacking him. 
Failed U.S. Senate candidate Roy Moore is still asking for money and blaming LGBT people, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and everyone but himself for his troubles. This is hilarious. Just pray for it, Roy. Pray it in. It'll come in, right? Unbelievable. Moore, who in December lost a special election to rep to represent Alabama in the... Oh, you poor people in Alabama. I have to say, bless your hearts. You... <laughs> You came this close. Okay, posted an appeal on Facebook Thursday seeking funds for his defense in a lawsuit brought on by Leigh Korfman, the woman who accused him of, a sex of sexually abusing her when she was only 14. Okay, and this isn't the only person he's been, he's been uh, in contact with. This isn't the only allegation. This, this is the same guy. This is the same guy who, uh, when he was like... 29, almost 30, was banned from a shopping mall because he would go there and follow these young girls around. And also he would try to solicit for their for their phone numbers. He would ask them for their numbers or if they wanted to go out later. This guy was genuine creep. In fact, one employee remembers, um, I, I believe she reported him, reported him, and uh, he was a band from that shopping mall in Alabama, I believe it was. This guy is one bona fide, he, he's certifiable, he's, he's a creep. He is a creep. <laughs> I now face another vicious attack from lawyers in Washington, D.C. and San Francisco who have hired one of the biggest firms in Birmingham, Birmingham Alabama to bring another legal action against me and ensure that I never fight again. Moore wrote on the Facebook page of his Senate campaign. Facebook, you say? Me senses a uh, trolling opportunity. <laughs> when was this article written? Oh, March 2nd, 2018. Huh. Oh, not even two days ago. There's still time. I wonder if his Facebook is still up. <laughs> oh, now... This is interesting. He wrote on his Facebook page, However, I will trust God that he will allow truth to prevail against the unholy forces of evil behind their attack. Yeah. But Moore said he needs more, he needs money in addition to God. <laughs> Noting that his legal fees could run to more than $100,000. My resources have been depleted and I have struggled to make ends meet. Oh, you poor man. He needs money in addition to God. What? God not enough, Roy? <laughs> God not enough? <laughs> oh, that's funny. He offered a litany of enemies he is fighting. The liberal media, in association with some who want to destroy our country, do not want my influence in 2018 elections. Nobody wants your influence, Roy. Nobody. Nobody with any thinking, with any critical thinking, and are doing Everything they can to stop me, he wrote. Gays, lesbians, transgenders have joined forces with those who believe in abortion, sodomy, destruction of all that we hold dear. Unless we stand together, we will lose our country. Too frickin' late, Roy. Our country was sold out a century ago. We've been sold out to the banks and corporations and Wall Street and everything else. 1913 came and went, buddy. You're way too late for this party. In his efforts to bring his values and truths to Washington, values and truths, you got to be kidding me. There is nothing, there's nothing of value in you and there is no truth in you, Roy. I don't know how these, pe these people are psychopaths. How can you say with a straight face, values and truth? You are a pedophile. Unbelievable. I was forced to fight the Washington establishment, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the ultra-liberal media, and people such as George Soros, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and many other people who fear the truth. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Obama and Hillary? Serious? George Soros? Wow. <laughs> no, no, Roy. Let's break this down. You shot your own foot... You're hopping on the other foot, and you're now taking aim at the other one. Just shh, hush, do yourself a favor. Shut up. <laughs> the allegations by Korfman, 
uh, and uh, and other women. Yeah, there were there were many more than that who say more sought relationships with them when they were teenagers, including one who accused him of sexual assault, helped sink Moore's bid for the Senate. This this went on in the eighties, seventies and eighties. It took all this time to figure out what a creep this guy was. I'm not buying it. Not only did the Republican Party, whatever, whoever, not only did they know about it, they purposefully hid it. And it took and it took public outcry to oust him. Otherwise, he 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 would be representing Alabama. Nice. He was still refused to con- he still refuses to concede his loss to Democratic Doug Jones, who has already been sworn in. More the former Chief Justice of Alabama Supreme Court. Holy hell. This guy was a Supreme Court Justice of Alabama. I would love to know not only the number of cases, but what cases he presided over and what his rulings were. I would be interested to know what... I wonder if any cases came up as far as... uh, Well, since it's being Supreme Court, it probably was mostly constitutional, but I just have to wonder... Somebody must have a compiled list somewhere. Because I I just wonder... I just wonder if he was... Oversaw any cases leading to things that he was involved in, if you get my meaning. He was removed from the court for ethics violations related to his efforts to block marriage equality in Alabama. So it's not so much what he did, but how he did it. (laughs) Okay. So ethics violations, and this is the people that would, and there are people that would have voted for this guy because he's a Republican and not a Democrat. Unbelievable. This is the kind of, this is the kind of just, this is, this is what gets Trump elected. People like him. That guy is a pedophile. That, make no mistake about it. That guy is a pedophile, a creep. Okay. And this guy, and then and then conservative Christians. Well, I voted for Pants. I just I, I wanted Pence to get in, so I held my nose and voted for Trump. Unbelievable. Pence is a closet gay. Unbelievable. And no offense to gays, by the way, but I'm telling you what, they know their own. You 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 talk to some of these people on social media, they they they'll tell you straight out. Yeah, Pence is gay. And I'm like, okay, I'll take your word for it. But yeah, th- this is just unbelievable, unbelievable. We are w- we are witnessing theocracy, idiocracy in one fell swoop. Gays are are causing natural disasters. Unreal. Unreal. <laughs> gay marriage, and gays caused Noah's flood. Wow, I, you learn something new every day. Unbelievable. Yeah, so I'm going to be, yeah, I'll be making more videos and I'm going to be, uh, we're going to visit uh, Pastor Pence and we're going to also visit Ben Carson. Oh man, I can't wait. Also Billy Graham, I can't wait. Mm-mm-mm. Makes my teeth white. Mm-mm. Unbelievable. Loving it. Yeah, so that's it. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm gobsmacked and people will take and run with it. Unbelievable. I got nothing.